Let's bring in Carmi Levy, a tech analyst, to talk a little bit more about this. Carmi, thanks for joining us. Good to be with you, Roger. Are you surprised by this lawsuit, or has this been a long time coming? Yeah, I'm surprised it took this long for the U.S. to finally get serious about it. They've introduced sort of bits and pieces of, of legislation over the last number of years, dating back to 2016, trying to bring the industry in line to give consumers more of a leg up, reduce the power of companies like Ticketmaster to determine how much you pay, where you buy it, the terms of that agreement. Uh, but to no avail. Uh, the, these kinds of behaviors still continue. Consumers are still complaining in all jurisdictions jurisdictions about how much they're paying and the hoops they have to jump through in order to get tickets. It's become uh, a very consumer unfriendly activity. So long time coming, certainly long overdue, but good to see. Uh, and for once in, in, in our lives, Canada has led the charge. Canada did this in 2018. Our competition bureau has already taken this company to task and uh, the American action certainly signals uh, it's time for this to end. Where did how did Ticketmaster do this? I mean, I, I look when I buy tickets, the only thing you think of is Ticketmaster. Exactly. You know, they have become, by some estimates, as of last year, I think their market penetration in the U.S. alone was an estimated 70 percent. Uh, and so they have what we call scale. They have the technology. They have the contracts to lock in artists and venues and essentially uh, anyone else that if you want to buy a ticket, you really have little choice but to go through them. Uh, and of course, you know, what's interesting here is consumers have long complained that you, you, you know, you'll see the ticket go on sale. And before you can even get online and, and purchase it, the tickets are now sold out. And then magically, seconds later, they show up on secondary sites like StubHub uh, for incredibly elevated prices. And this is a constant theme on both sides of the border. Uh, and much of it is driven by the dominance of this one company that they have the resources to essentially lock everyone else out. If you wanted to compete with this company, the kinds of data centers and technologies that you would need to put in place, uh, they're unfathomable. There's absolutely no way for any competitors to enter into this market because of it. Now, are parts of the allegation are that they're using bots to buy the tickets from themselves and then bring them into the secondary market, the scalper markets. I hate calling it the secondary markets. They're scalpers. <laughs> exactly. You know, this this is no different than than the scalpers we used to encounter on a downtown sidewalk on the night of a major event. But of course, the scale and scope of this are way beyond what any of those individuals could have ever envisioned. And I think part of the problem here revolves around that lack of transparency is that all of this is a black box. When we sign into one of these sites to buy a ticket, we don't know what's going on uh, you know, under the surface, behind the scenes, but we do know that we are being hosed because the longer it takes for us to complete that transaction, the more zeros get added to the bottom line. So part of this action is you know, by the DOJ is to really force the industry to show its cards, shine a light on how they operate and prove that they are, in fact, operating in consumers' best interest because every piece of evidence that we have suggests that's the, to the contrary. Okay, just one last question. You mentioned Canada. How might this change the way tickets are sold? Has it changed it at all here? Uh, so far, it hasn't, uh, because uh, Ticketmaster uh, appealed that decision, in fact, went all the way to the Supreme Court before it was ultimately turned down. So uh, we're still paying more than we probably should. I still see uh, uh, evidence of that in my social media feeds. People are still complaining about it. So the Competition Bureau started this process a whole lot of years ago, but we're still not there yet. And it's going to take a lot more action by federal authorities, by our legislative bodies, to force the industry to start behaving in a more consumer-friendly way. Uh, we're nowhere near there yet, and uh, we need a lot more investment. All right, it sounds like we're years away. Carmi, thanks for joining us, as always, with your expertise. Appreciate it, Roger. Carmi Levy is our tech analyst.